realize just how dark it is in my basement, Joe. When yeah, it's very. <laughs> it's like it's it's very gloomy when you're relying only on natural light in there. <laughs> you definitely could not handwrite a letter down here when <laughs> when the lights are off. <laughs> There's no such thing as natural light down here. Um, <laughs> but uh, hey, it's good to be back for another side stitch and. You know, this week we're we're going to be covering like an evolution of of nerd culture and history and how it was able to mm-hmm. become a tidal wave that is now enveloping damn near everything. Um, yeah, yeah. Before nerd was basically just a uh, um, a go to word for people who are passionate about things or well versed about uh, basically anything. Um, it was basically just a term that only applied to one group of people um yeah so uh, yeah these are are those types of proud people yeah but but yes a very limited and esoteric group observed by by (laughs) scientists and (laughs) academia but but uh never never been greeted in person you know no Mm -mm. prime prime directive we can't approach the nerds or else they'll They'll learn about our customs and <laughs> become normal. <laughs> um, well, yeah. you know, it's it, you could probably tell after folks after you listen to the episode this week that you know it's a realization that I think all of us took time to to better understand. And uh, I mean, it's pretty clear that nerd culture has definitely become pop culture now. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we wanted to do since, and once again, you might notice that our our, our good friend Chelsea, she's not here today. Um, yeah, as as a friend's wedding is uh, bearing down upon her, she gets closer <laughs> and closer to it, and her responsibilities just grow, just 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 seem to grow. <laughs> so Chelsea will not be with us on the side stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and you know what? It's 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 really funny because like yeah, we bring her on the show and. Obviously, we we've we've had some really fun conversations with Chelsea, but these weddings they just keep sneaking up on her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, she had so many friends that wanted to share their happiness with her. Um... <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joey, you, you try to call me up. You're like, Mark, I have great news, and I go, I don't want to hear it. Just... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> You will not decide to spend the rest of your life with only one other person. What is wrong with you? <laughs> you pack down those emotions. You hide those feelings. <laughs> well, oh, so the, so we we didn't know just how much we left on the vine here when it came to discussing nerd culture. But for some of you who have indicated that you're marginally interested in the lives of your your hosts and creators of this program, we decided that we would share some of the personal reasons for why we thought maybe we had the same barriers that we discussed Mm -hmm. in this episode, as far as being able to really maybe even like maybe share nerd culture with other people um, and talk about uh, what, what that felt like, you know, back when we were younger, because I mean, Joe, we're even just looking back, uh, geez, even, even 15 years, I mean, technology's changed so much in that time period. If we went back 20, 25 years, I mean, yes, we, we've come a long way. So um, I didn't know if you wanted to start, if you want me to start talking about some of the early oh, days. Yeah. Um, I mean, like the early, early days of, of Nerdom for me was definitely comic book reading. Um, that was probably the biggest part of it. My brother... Um, was really really big into like spider-man and the x-men in the 90s um Mm -hmm. so i kind of started with that but i was always more of a uh, more of a superman person so i i grew up reading those um i uh kind of think other things that really got me uh early probably power rangers um when things came up from japan and it was i don't know people dressed up like dinosaurs with bat- massive dinosaur robots. Like what, like what more do you want as a kid? That's incredible. It's awesome. Um, Losing our damn minds over that. Yeah, you were. And you had this amazing riffing guitar in like for the opening <laughs> sequence, like, come on, get out of here with this. This is everything kids want with a is little it? bit of teenage angst mixed in there. Just peppered right in. 
you, you hear that riff and <laughs> and as kids we were like you know all like 11 and 12 years old and we're like going mm -hmm. is this puberty what, what's going on down there <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i like i really like it's like dirty thing there i like i still listen to that song like before i go i usually um i play tennis with friends here and on my drive over um when i actually have my car uh I usually just play music that gets me excited. <clears throat> and that that is in the playlist of like hype music. Um <laughs> it's like the Power Ranger theme still pops in there. It's it's like a it's like a heavy metal cover of it, but it I mean it's the same thing. It's oh yeah. Great. Yeah. <clears throat> any any heavy metal cover of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme because if you just say Power Rangers folks, that's true. Get, that's that's a that's a very <clears throat> deep well. <laughs> very very that. deep well that is just <laughs> always always a few decades behind the super sentai series i i, I, I take that back they were i should because like yeah when the first one premiered like zoo ranger had only been out i think for like a year so it was like the most recent one but yeah no like uh power rangers and super sentai is a is a huge spanning thing that's been going on i think since the 70s so yeah. There have been yeah. there have been a lot of iterations of it, um, but yeah, that's 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 probably where I started with uh, with nerdy things, and then you know to continue uh, probably with me like I don't know like the stereotypical like I'm gonna make all these drawings that no one's ever gonna see but me because I'm too like I don't want to share them with other people. These are just my drawings, um, <laughs> and yeah, that's probably where everything started. And then video games just kind of you know naturally flowed into that. How about you? Where did where did your nerdiness um, begin? So it's it's funny how my entry point for like nerddom didn't actually start with superheroes, didn't start with video games, it didn't even start with um, TVs or TV or movies. It actually started with a documentary from Robert Ballard, who rediscovered the Titanic. And okay, yeah, I did not see that coming. It, it's and I'll explain. Trust me, I, I'm I've I'm ready to mm -hmm. explain myself. Um, <laughs> so my my dad was in the army. I, I've mentioned this a couple of times in the show, and that we moved around a lot. Uh, as we talk about barriers, well, the people I knew in my life were typically related to me for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's no uh, it's no mystery that a lot of people in the military end up being history buffs because, well, when you, when you get your education as a soldier, a lot of times you're hearing about tactics and uh, stories that are from the people in the military before you who created mm -hmm. these things, right? So there's a lot of historians in the army. My dad, of course, would inevitably be a major influence on me from that standpoint. So some of the earliest memories I actually have as a kid involve Dr. Robert Ballard discovering the Titanic because yeah. it hadn't, hadn't been seen in a long ass time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, touchy subject, right? Because a couple people died. It was a PR disaster. Um, oh, completely. Um, you had that that one woman who just wouldn't share the uh, the wreckage with the dude and he like sank to his doom. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. Yeah. People just didn't want that to come to light. You know, it was, yeah. it was really rough. So, mm -hmm. So for me, the whole reasoning behind uh, the nerddom and why I attach it to this so much is because I was probably the only three-year-old slash four-year-old who was reading about the Titanic. Yeah. And, and so like it, it, <laughs> it kind of began building out my mind palace. Like, okay, so I know that they found, you know, uh, like lobsters down there in the Titanic mm -hmm. when they went fishing around in it. You know, I, I know that they opened up safes that included, uh, you know, personal, you know, personal items and they found liquor and stuff down there, all that kind of stuff. Well, as a nerd, a lot of us have a ton of knowledge about very specific topics. OK. And mm -hmm. and we kind of adapt this to other properties as we go. Well, the Titanic was like the first example of that for me. Like I, I learned a shitload about the Titanic and. And then all of a sudden, I just had this ability to, you know, deeply associate with with other uh, other things, and and so it yeah it started there. Um, very quickly after that, though, would be Ghostbusters. Oh because... yes. Now, 
before yeah. we bridge to Ghostbusters, um, was was it the same documentary that uh, um, I don't say convinced you, but inspired you and uh, your dad to build the? Because you have a don't you have a massive Titanic model hanging out at your parents' house? Oh yes, yes. The mm -hmm. <laughs> it's and it's and ironically enough, uh, yes, we would create the Titanic model. Now, my hands were. Uh, not dexterous enough and far too shitty to actually help contribute to this when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> I just just didn't have it. But uh, um, but yes, we built the Titanic together as a family. And once it was completed, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty large it is you know, model. model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, moving around a lot, we were like, well, we don't want this thing to A, collect dust because it's hard to clean. And two, yep. we don't want it to get broken. So what did we do? We sealed this Titanic model up just like the crates you see in Raiders of the Lost Ark in the giant I was warehouse. Say, this is the this is the Ark of the Covenant right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So somewhere my dad's in the basement of his new house with this thing on a cart pushing it into this massive <laughs> warehouse. Um, and uh, but that's that's really where yeah, dude, that was it. Like I I buried so much time and I remember when they did so this was a National Geographic documentary that they did. Uh, back then, and I, I don't even know. It had to be on TV somewhere, but we bought it on VHS and we watched it to the point where we almost, damn near broke this thing. Um, <laughs> just like the Ghostbusters VHS. But mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it was it was mesmerizing because for one, I didn't know about the Titanic. I was three years old. I was like, you know, still occasionally <laughs> shitting my pants. You know, I was only concerned <laughs> about. I only wanted my my uh you know my spaghettios with some hot dogs chopped up in it i didn't care about a whole lot back <laughs> no then. you know life um, was simple it was so simple but then the complication of 1980s you know cameras under the under the damn ocean and it's just foggy down there You're, you know they they kind of had an idea of how the ship would have drifted and where it would have ended up but they didn't know they didn't know exactly where it was no clue yeah but you see all the buildup in the video, you know, you, you hear the story. And then when you see the, the actual ship itself for the first time, and for many seeing it for the first time, because we hadn't since it sank, mm -hmm. that for me began like this, this path to, to nerd them. Like it was like, holy shit, I'm interested in this. And half of my friends will, I'm going to say like 90% of my friends will never see this documentary. <laughs> you know, but it was, it was mesmerizing. It was creepy. It was interesting. It was because there's something eerie about looking at a historical shipwreck where thousands of people died. I mean, it's just, yeah. there's something about it, you know? And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that documentary dude, it, it kicked off a firestorm for me because after I watched that documentary, I went, Everything I like, I'm gonna like as much as this. Like if I put time into something, Ooh. I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm going to just seek it out as much as I could because this was at a time when the internet wasn't there yet. And no. mm -mm. yeah. We were still reading books, people. Do you remember books? Yeah. Yeah. You had to like actually go out and look for cats doing weird things or watch <laughs> your own cat doing weird things. <laughs> that was that's how you got your cats, is you had to watch your own cat. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. We've come such a long way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, yeah, I, I, I haven't actually, I don't share this with a lot of people. Um, and it's not because I'm ashamed of it or anything, but it's, it's one of those stories where when people start talking about their nerdiness and their identity and how they began to build it up, well, this was one of those stories that I hid for a long time because... I didn't know a lot of history buffs. Everybody I did was in my family, right? So I felt fine yeah. sharing it with them. But um, what this would end up doing for me, Joe, was it would cause me to really attach myself to characters like Ray Stance and Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a, I mean, he's also kind of a student of history in a lot of ways. Uh, he has this childlike enthusiasm for the things that he kind of, you know, takes interest in. Um, <laughs> Stan and, would call him a true believer. Yes, he would. <laughs> he would call him a true believer. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and you know what? I mean, I, I can't say that like Ray Stance is like my, my personal hero because, um, mm -hmm. the, the whole reason why I was introduced to these things is because of my dad. I mean, 
he, he's the one that put us in front of these things. And so um, as, as it went on, you know, as time went on, I would see more and more like influences of my dad in characters and in, in some of these properties. And uh, that's what kind of caused me to latch on to these early ones, like Ghostbusters, Indiana Jones. I mean, you mm -hmm. can't, you can't go from like, like being obsessed with the Titanic and like early Egyptian history and then not like Indiana Jones. <laughs> oh I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, just totally. And, and I mentioned the Egyptian <laughs> stuff, dude, my dad went to Egypt for, uh, for peacekeeping operations in the late eighties. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah. For those of you who aren't familiar, we've pretty much been in Iraq a long ass time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, but I'm not going to get into that, but, um, so yeah, he went to Egypt, you know, he brought back like a, a copy of the Rosetta stone. Like, so <laughs> for, for me, nerddom started with history. It definitely mm -hmm. did. And then it branched out from there. But, but the, the foundation was definitely history. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, that's a much more like, I don't know. I don't want to say, I say probably practical <laughs> like application <laughs> for nerddom because like, I just feel like, like if you were like in a dinner conversation or like something and you bring up something from history, so I was like, oh, this man's very well educated. And if I were to tell you, yeah, but do you know what blue kryptonite does to Superman? They'd be like, well, he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think this actually serves the point quite well, Joe, is that you and I both were nerdy in different ways we would end up crossing mm -hmm. paths right because i mean i got into the same x-men comic oh, books yeah. that you did mm -hmm. you know the same dc properties especially some of the mega events we talked about before and it, it is an appearances thing you know like we mm -hmm. we're tremendously proud of the knowledge and the love we have for some of these things and yeah the the technology wasn't there yet the communities were either not there mm -hmm. or incredibly hard to find mm -hmm. uh, and whenever you did find a localized, you know, reason to be able to share it with somebody, either that person moves away or you go to a yep. different school or, you know, or. or Look at you, you, Keith. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, he said Keith, but he means Steve Meyer, who uh, <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to ruin the joke for Steve Meyer. Well, oh, we'll, no, we'll let Steve that Meyer one. lives on. <laughs> yeah. We'll let that one simmer for a little bit. Um. But, but similar to what we'll talk about later this week in our episode, I mean, technology was obviously a big reason for why most of us were able to feel that sense of community eventually. And mm -hmm. it's just not something we had. So, I mean, I know for you, Joe, you you grew up in a fairly small town, right? Like, I mean, how oh, many yeah. people, could, could you count them on one hand? Like, how many people could you realistically talk to about comics with? <laughs> um, realistically, uh, people that I knew, um, my brother <laughs> and even the, like yeah pretty much just him because like i remember um hitting a point in probably middle school probably about the time where like i could actually start play, i think probably like the fifth grade um is when i have like I, I started playing sports because i need to be active but i hate just like to today like going to the gym is the worst thing in the world for me but <laughs> if i can like be active and run around and do stuff that's great um, so basically when I got to the point where all of my friends are definitely like all of my friends and other people are playing sports, I am down to, um, probably my brother and one other person, uh, that I could talk nerdy things with. And that other person was definitely more, um, like my childhood best friend growing up, uh, Vince Hoffman. He wasn't really a comic book person. He was much more of a, like a, like a tech person. Yeah. So like video games got him, uh, computers that could actually process quickly got him. So I could do that stuff. With, I could like talk about those things with him and that work is a pretty great outlet for my, for my nerd dumb. And that was like more or less the only outlet for it for quite a while. Um, yeah. cause like going through middle school, it was basically Vince. Um, as I've talked about in previous episodes, we had like the, the three other friends or the two other friends who I, we played Pokemon with yeah. and that was about it. Um, it was just like, it was pretty much reduced to like video games as my, my last like little hope of like acceptance of like, like social acceptance, uh, with, with friends, but like comic books, uh, no one did anymore. Um, even like 
like I hell like hell like Power Rangers. I was secretly watching that through I think Turbo, and then as soon as like the original cast was gone, then I stopped watching it. But no one yeah. else was watching it, other than my friends until then, except for Vince Hoffman had like seen a clip of the Turbo movie. And yeah. I just remember at one point, hilariously, because we used to have to bike back and forth between each other's houses, and we lived yeah, a little over a mile away from each other. And he gets into my driveway, and I have it like my parents have an old gravel driveway, and he yells out shift into turbo, and then he <laughs> clicks to like shift his bike. I think it skips it like the chain like fucks up and skips, and then he just fishtails and biffs it. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, oh my god that's that's a perfect way to describe like like what happened with early power rangers because like mm -hmm. so many of us watched like like you mentioned like the original crew and yep and like maybe through like the first the first maybe like mm -hmm. second se second movie was there it's just the first movie i think i don't think the second yeah. movie came out for a while so mm -hmm. after that first movie like power ranger stuff like people were still watching like you mentioned yeah. but not mm -hmm. nearly as many so i was in the same no. boat same boat you were man i was like watching power <laughs> rangers and i'm like is this gonna ruin friendships for me yeah. <laughs> so we just don't talk about it um yeah just bury and... it down just bury it down yeah, man just bury just, it down. And then, stuffing it down fuck i like getting to high school though like middle school i at least had that close knit of friends where, like one friend i could do some nerd stuff with my brother then i get to high school my brother goes off to college um and like a lot of kids do when they hit that age um they hang out with other people so yeah. like i had like vince hung out with like the cross country kids and the band kids and my other friends just i don't know i actually have no idea who my other friends started hanging out with when i was in high school um but then like i found my way into a friend group and they were a huge car like they were big car people so like if i would have brought up hey anyone uh Want to watch the new adventures of Superman and Lois Lane uh, of Clark and, uh, uh, Clark, <laughs> Lois and Clark. Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman? They'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Um, yeah, yeah. What the, what the hell are you bringing that yeah. cabbage in here for? Come yeah. on, come on. Yeah, we watch that. <laughs> yeah. So, like, <laughs> high school, Wisconsin. like, my nerddom was completely, like, closeted. And, like, yep, uh, they'll know I'm nerdy because my science grades are high. And that's about it. Um, yeah, you definitely, yeah. Uh, if we're going based off of the the special attributes from fallout i think you definitely uh put most of yours into intelligence uh whereas i put all of mine into strength and luck like those were the only two things i put any points into <laughs> like, like yep yep i can't perceive that you're angry with me but you know what i can lift something really heavy and not trip over anything while i do it that's those are my things yeah yeah I, you know and i i think joe um what you're kind of mentioning here is what uh, I think is important to point out with with nerdy things in like the 90s and even the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there were people that that maybe were extremely nerdy about something, but the the idea of them having essentially like your your paint, you know, your paint uh, was it called an easel? Mm -hmm. Easel is that what it's called? Where you have like the ten it's different a kinds palette, of palette, isn't it? Yeah, palette. There we go. That's a palette. Yeah, the easel is so, what you actually put the the canvas on. To... Yes, yes. Yep. I knew I was forgetting it. Yeah, the palette, like like nowadays for, for a nerd, like you could paint with like 20 different colors, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Back then, you maybe had one or two colors on that palette and you yeah. didn't tell anybody about them. No. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, so it was so when we did finally run into other nerds, uh, it wouldn't be until mm -hmm. like you, like for my brothers and I, uh, particularly my older brother, Nate, we would find a friend of ours who had, um, an affinity for the monkey island game that i that we talked about yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the, ga the games that made us and so for monkey island uh my brothers and i loved that game we loved all of the early lucas arts point and click adventures we loved them we thought mm -hmm. they were great you had to think about stuff and here's our a, a kid that we meet in a military base in the mid 90s and he's like the only other living person we ever knew who played him and uh -huh. <laughs> we <laughs> We'd moved around like a half dozen times already and like you'd go up to somebody and, and a friend and you're like playing and you're like you know you're sharing some mutual interest and you go hey have you ever played monkey island and they'd go dude bro i'm six like 
I, the world is still new to me. I, yeah, you're talking about <laughs> Commodores and Ataris, and like I, I <laughs> like I, I accidentally shit my pants on the bus this morning, dude. I don't know what a monkey island is. <laughs> so, so that that's what we were up against. And so, like when we finally meet this friend of ours uh, along the way, um, yeah, like we would we would still talk to this kid even after we moved. Like he's like the only nerd friend that I've had for longer than like ten years. I've known this kid since I was. Uh, I think at that time I was like either eight or nine. And ever since then, it was like, yep, this dude gets us. We get him. <laughs> you were anointed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, until there was the ability to seek out mm -hmm. communities and actually converse with other people that had these mutual interests, it was, it was gray space until then. So yeah, completely. Um, I remember like, at least in like in high school, like I barely let my, uh, like we usually like hung out with like my friends at their houses. And whenever we hung out at my house, we actually made it. So like one of the old farm property buildings, um, that my parents have, we like carpeted, insulated and furnished. And we hung out there when we came to my house because I by and large still didn't want them going into my bedroom. I'm like, I have action figures up there still that I'm not ready for them to see yet. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. we go up to your bedroom, mm -hmm. Joe, and you're like, not unless everybody gets cool with a lot of stuff really fast. <laughs> pretty fast. <laughs> yep, pretty much. That's what it was. Like, I've still got my like um like uh those like that that wasn't full wallpaper, but it was basically like just like not battering, but it yeah. I don't yeah. know, it was like I don't know, like a foot long of um uh, things that went around like the uh the border of my room of planets i still had like the glow in the dark stars and stuff on my ceiling I'm like this yeah. shit's cool it's science it's fun i love it um and like i it, i think to this day that's still up at my parents house like that hasn't changed um so i can go back to my room and it's still relatively the same um uh, but yeah no and then i'm trying to think of when it actually became a little more acceptable again to be slightly nerdy because like I do remember um, being in college in my first two years, I went to UW Baraboo while still living with my parents because that way, like, oh, I can save on uh, money, not paying for like larger tuitions for larger schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would have land parties on Thursday nights to play Halo. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was probably Halo 2 at that point. Yeah, was, I think it was Halo 2. Um, and that's where suddenly it's like, oh, my God. Like a lot of people are here doing this. This is yeah. fantastic. This is great. Um, and it felt really good again. But I could like, oh, I've got I've got friends who uh who play video games and like they're hanging out and playing video games together with pizza and not soda, and <laughs> we're yeah. we're playing Halo. This was fun. I mean, it it did feel like a a pop culture renaissance in a lot mm -hmm. of ways, you know, and it and uh once again, we don't want to take the wind out of the sails or, or yeah. talk too much about things you're going to hear about <laughs> later this week. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, it, it really took off. And to this day, I mean, that openness has, is a benefit that a lot of people have that we didn't growing up. Um, yeah. And, and so I will say that I am extremely thankful that these are topics that I no longer have to keep to myself. Um, mm -hmm. because, uh, now there's so many people that love it. I think one of the one of the coolest things that I can point out, especially since we've been on Twitter, right, as a as a show. Mm -hmm. If you look through Twitter and you feel like, or if you haven't looked on Twitter before and you kind of feel like you're in this like nerd zone like we were, like this is for folks that maybe maybe you might still feel kind of awkward, or you might still feel kind of weird, right? And you don't know how to think about this stuff yet. Um, Twitter can be, a, we've talked about this before. It can be a cesspool. It can be a, it can be a void. <laughs> um, but try looking on Twitter and just type in some of your favorite things, whether it's a game, whether it's a movie, whether it's a comic and you will or find the same picture of Jeff Goldblum every day, every goddamn day, every, yes. every day, the same yeah. picture biting that little finger. Yeah. He knows what he's doing, <laughs> but, but seriously, go check out Twitter and just type them in. You will find thousands of people now who mm -hmm. are who are loving the same stuff talking about the same stuff um and so if anything i think nerddom nowadays isn't a reason to feel alone if anything it is a reason to find communities find people that care about stuff that the same way that you do um and yeah i mean i i think i think we're living in the 
the best timeline, Joe. I really do. <laughs> I do too. <laughs>